Hi there, my name is Amod and I am the founder of Consonance Acoustics, an acoustical design company. Now in this video, we will talk about the common mistakes we have seen people make while designing auditoriums and later face the walk of shame. While studying for my masters in engineering acoustics, I learned these basic no-nos which I want to share with you so that you can easily incorporate them in your design. Architects usually create a vision for a space and then design it accordingly. But they oftentimes make some trivial acoustical mistakes. Now that can be avoided before moving on towards designing. And this video will discuss what those mistakes are and give you a possible work around those acoustical defects. Firstly, curved surfaces are the first thing that one should avoid while designing an auditorium. It is a big no-no. Can you guess which world famous performance hall had this issue? The Royal Albert Hall. The Royal Albert Hall had really poor acoustics when it was built. When you take the tour, they also tell you about it and later show you the treatment. Amongst other issues, one of the bigger issues was the dome. Oftentimes it is easy to forget the utility of a space and people later repent when someone comes to them and charges a huge refitting bill. Whenever there is a curved surface, waves falling on it will reflect in a concentrated way towards a point. This creates a focal point for sound in an auditorium, creating an imbalance in sound. The best way to work around any curve is to add an absorbing or a diffusing layer on top. Royal Albert Hall's dome has these amazing discs hanging from the ceiling as a defense against this problem. There are also diffusers called quadratic residue diffusers and skyline diffusers. These diffuse sound. Their shape, which although looks random, helps in creating a surface that interacts with incoming sound waves, which are scattered back in all directions. It is of importance to note that this happens specific for specific frequency bands, which is dependent on the shape and size of these diffusers. Secondly, confusing wood or plywood as an absorbing material. We have seen people put gypsum boards or quarter inch plywood boards over two inches of rock wool and then apply a fabric over it to add some aesthetic value and call it an absorbing panel. Materials with a surface density which is greater than 10 kgs per meter square have negligible sound attenuation. Plywood has a density of around 650 kg per meter cube which means unless the plywood is below 15 mm, it will not even begin to absorb anything. Additionally, sound absorption mechanisms differ for different frequency bands. Now imagine installing a framework on walls, inserting rock wool and then later applying an 18 mm plywood on board on top of that and calling that a sound absorbing panel. It should be called a money waste panel. Sound absorption works differently for different frequencies of sound. To explain simply, high pitched sounds are absorbed by perforated absorbers which let air come inside them and then obstruct its flow. Common examples of such absorbers are uh, perforated gypsum panels, rock wool panels which have fabric wrappings, uh, something like this, fabric upholstered uh, auditorium seats or drapes etc. Now low pitch sounds are absorbed by vibrating membranes which are slightly complicated than perforated absorbers. They need a very low surface density of the top layer. Neither of the absorbers can therefore have plywood as their top layer. Third point is having a long balcony overhang. To accommodate more people in the audience, it is thought of as a good way to have balconies. This way people can be accommodated below the balcony overhang and on the balconies. This type of seating design has been followed since many many years. To have good audio below the balcony overhang, the level of reverberant energy is of great importance. Now the level of reverberant energy below the balcony overhang is determined by the relation between the height of the overhang and the depth of the seating below the overhang. This energy if too low creates a dead sounding space and hence it is a problem for listeners especially in the case of musical performances. Best way to deal with this is to simulate reverberation but a general rule of thumb can be to have the height greater than or equal to twice the depth for theatres and greater than or equal to the depth for concert halls. 
Fourth point is having exactly parallel surfaces. It is common to have halls shaped as a shoe box, sloped stairs, having side walls parallel to each other. Now that causes an annoying effect called flutter echo. Say there are two sound sources which play the same sound with some time delay. Now humans can't perceive sound two sources if the time delay is below 50 milliseconds. This is called the just noticeable difference of the J and D. For echoes to be heard, we have known since school that distance of more than 17 meters is required. This is because the speed of sound is 340 meters per second and J and D is 50 milliseconds for humans. So 340 into 0.05 is equal to 17 meters. That's the distance required so that you can hear the reflected sound again. Now, even if the distance between parallel surfaces is less than 17 meters, the multiple rapid reflections will mean that there are some reflections that will occur after this interval of 50 milliseconds. These will be heard like flutters as they are spaced close together in terms of time. They cause a decrease in clarity of speech and other audio aspects. There are a few ways to work around this. Absorbing um, only one of the parallel surface can stop the flutter echoes from happening. Also adding diffusers can help. Even if the surfaces have an angle of 3 degree between them, it is sufficient to avoid flutter echoes from happening. With the knowledge of what not to do, you can incorporate these simple techniques in your design and deliver the perfect product to your clients. We have observed that clients don't really know of these issues until these issues occur. Having prepared a solution definitely sets you apart. Now, unfortunately, we can't cover stuff in detail in this video, but you are encouraged to write to us to know more about auditorium design. Uh, email and contact link is given in the description below. Thank you. Bye-bye.